Now, if there were such a thing as being a professional beachcomber, first of all, that would be super cool. Second of all, I think I might be able to be considered an apprentice because I do go to the beach very often and I have taught myself a thing or two about the things that I find at the beach. Now, we had experienced a bunch of storms and so I am now going to the beach to see what all that storm has left behind. I'm on Sanibel Island, and let me tell you, not only is this place absolutely beautiful, it was absolutely fun because that storm kicked up some crazy stuff. So I got to see that shark, the squishiest of sea cucumbers, a couple of critters with some exoskeletons, as well as a live clam. Now there are also some egg casings, so we will be looking at those as well. And of course, the seashells. As I go along, I'll be picking those up and identifying them. So if you're ready to see what all is out there for us today, let's go to the beach. So here we are at Sanibel and it is clear that a storm came by. These beaches are beat up. It's a little bit later than I normally get to the beach. It's 925. I was trying to catch the low tide at 1214, but still get here early enough to see some good stuff. So it's a little bit windy. It's really not cold or anything, but I did decide to keep my feet dry. So I am wearing boots. I'm not going in the water at all today. I'm excited to see what all is going to be here. We did have a couple of days of storms, and so it is typical for it to be pretty good shelling after some storms. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, clearly there are seashells all over the place. I'm kind of trying to find like a rack line, or right, here's another paper fig. Now, paper figs, when I think paper fig, I really do think Sanibel, and these shells tend to be on the lighter side, like they're not heavy. And they're not delicate, but yeah, maybe a little bit delicate. So you will find those pushed up higher on the beach, not necessarily in the water. So let's see what's down here. So now I'm trying to get some sort of indication of what kind of seashells are here. And we're looking at, for all intent and purposes, your, most of your common shells. So it's not really slowing me down too much. I'm really just kind of taking a peek and, all right, let's see if we can find something exciting here. Oh, beautiful. So that is a very beautiful calico scallop. It's hard to find them that color. It's almost like red, real pretty. And oh, a little Florida horse conch. So that's our state shell. Yeah, I'm checking real good. The hermit crabs love those little horse conchs. So check those really good just to make sure it is empty. So this is a decent rack line. What's all here? Ooh, shark eye. Oh, darn it. So, oh, gorgeous. So that's a moon snail. I call it a shark eye. It is a little broken. It's a little broken. It's not perfect. I don't care. I'm keeping it. I think that's awesome. I do love the moon snails and they're really hard to find to, when they get bigger. Oh dear. So that makes me think of beach recycling. So that's a turkey wing and critters try to extract the calcium from the seashells. So that is beach recycling at its best. Boring sponges and other types of things will try to get that calcium out of the seashells. A yellow prickly cockle. Yep, that's a yellow prickly cockle, all right. And oh, all right, so that is another calico scallop with some matching barnacles. And those barnacles are empty. If it kind of looks like a volcano, you're in good shape. There's something inside there and it just kind of depends. It's near the water, I tend to leave them. I don't take the living stuff from the beach. It's just kind of how I roll. And I will have a video about that coming out because I had a rather unpleasant encounter with someone at the beach recently, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Let's see what's all is here. So this is an angel wing. Wow, that's fabulous. Hard to find them once they get bigger. They're kind of delicate when they're smaller, but I feel like once they get to a certain size, oh man, fantastic angel wing. 
And look at this. Now, I should have known. I mean, it's, it's not really empty. I mean, it's empty. There's no lightning whelk in here. But there's a hermit crab. Now, at this point, a woman is saying to me, hey, did you see the sharks in the water? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, no. Here's a hermit crab. And she's like, I know. I've been putting them back in the water all morning. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go film some sharks now. So that's what I went and did. And I was just so excited to see these sharks right on right in the surf there so there is three of them and like I said I'm wearing boots so I'm not getting in the water granted I wouldn't have necessarily been going up and trying to pet it anyway but I might have tried you know just to get a little bit closer the water was so shallow it was so exciting so it must have been from the storm. I don't know if... I've never seen anything like this here before, ever. That one, if I had to guess, I'd say that one's maybe four or five foot shark, maybe? Hard to say, but it was so thrilling. Oh, hey, so that's a juvenile ibis bird on the beach there. But it was absolutely thrilling. It's The shark is right there, and the beach doesn't really drop off. I mean, there's like a little bit of a drop off. So I, oh, it was so awesome. Now, I don't know my sharks. I was able to get a shot of its tail. Maybe somebody else, that's a close up of the tail. So maybe somebody else can help me ID. I did poke around in lemon sharks and bull sharks, kind of have like a little notch in their tail like that, but I do not know what, what kind of shark that is. Oh, that's so cool. Now, at one point, I'm also gonna show you some dolphin that were in the water at the same time. Yeah, that oh, it was so cool. Yeah, it went to the beach to, you know, pick up a couple seashells and got to hang out with some sharks for a while. It was awesome. I'm, I'm looking for the dolphins. Now, actually, I'm looking for that third shark because I knew there was three of them. There it is. So that's that third one. And then out in the distance here, this next shot, you see some dolphins. Well, the sharks are here dolphin back there they're porpoising you know the dolphins kind of breathe they just kind of porpoise whereas the sharks kind of go along with their fin exposed oh, yeah i love the beach you never know what's going to happen and there always seems to be something exciting going on here so that was really really cool so now i still have this uh shell in my hand with the hermit crab i do think it is either a blue-eyed hermit crab or one of those big red ones I'm trying to show you there you go yeah, you can see it's that's little claw so it's one of those two I believe and it, I have to say it has very good taste that's a really nice lightning well but I'm gonna put, put the crab kind of back where I found it the tide is coming in so if it needs to get moisturized it doesn't have very long to wait and the sharks are still on the surf there. Oh, so cool. All right, another paper fig. And another. So yeah, today's gonna be a fantastic paper fig day. That, that I think I can say for certain. Lightning walls, ooh, it's empty. Well, let's see. Yeah, it's a decent looking lightning walk. I can see it's been broken and kind of repaired itself at some point. Nice looking lightning walk. And another angel wing, awesome. I wonder, no, it's not this one, because I, at one point, I didn't care for the way, the shape of the shell, so I took a nail file to it, and I just kind of reshaped it, but, so you, you could do that. That is an angel wing, very nice. Yeah, I saw the horseshoe crab shell there. Let's see that. Oh, look at what we got here. So that is a true tulip. Mm, it's got a little hole in it. But because it's so big and I want, I'm really just curious about how much color is there. So stick around at the very end of the video. We're going to clean that up. I'm going to soak it in bleach, dip it in acid. We're going to see what that shell looks like. Oh, another angel wing. Cool. All right. Yeah, those barnacles are looking nice and, well, not nice and dry, but I'm not concerned. I don't think I'll be harming anyone by taking that angel wing from the beach egg casings 
So this is a pear whelk egg casing and it still has little itty bitty shells in there. So those little spots, those are baby shells. Some of the different species go about this process a little bit differently, but the pear whelks and the lightning whelks lay this kind of string of eggs. And so that is inside, there's also water inside there. So that to me means it's possibly viable. It was laid in the bottom of the ocean. It tried, the mom you know, sh shell or the mom snail tried to anchor that and it has come loose. So I'm gonna put it back in the water. Anytime I see these shells that I think might be viable. So this is another, this is a different casing. This one though, I can see the hole. So some of them got out. See that one's kind of empty. That disc is kind of empty and then other ones not so much. I don't know what happened here. So some of these are empty. Some of them still have those baby little tiny little shells in there or little snails really. So this one too, again, if I'm not sure if, if I'm even remotely, look at, you can see it's like a little baby shell. Some of the little critters will kind of like swim around like larva and then they get their shells. These are born with their shell on it. And again, if I think it's viable, I'm gonna put it back in the water. It's, it's probably not gonna help, but I don't know, just in case. Now this, this is the most squishy creature I've ever encountered on the beach. I've seen these before. That is a sea cucumber. You can see where it gets its name. Now what I love about the sea cucumbers is they're a very simple animal. It's pretty basic. And when it gets scared, it kind of expels its guts and says, here, eat this. And then the, the sea cucumber like escapes and then grows its guts again. I know, crazy, but crazy cool if you ask me. So hopefully that sea, sea cucumber is gonna go about its squishy life. We'll just see what else is here on the beach. Oh, yeah, garbage. So I will pick that up too. If I can handle it, I will remove any garbage that I see on the beach. Glass, we got a lot of people walking around barefoot, so I don't leave it letting it turn into sea glass. I remove it from the beach. Now this is another egg casing. This is a little different. This is from a true tulip. So again, the mommy snail laid these eggs under the water and anchored it to something. Uh, this one chose this pen shell. Well, the pen shell has come loose and now the egg casing and the piece is now all up on the beach. I'm trying to look and see if I see any of the little baby snails in there. And I don't, this looks all clear. It's just kind of hard. You can see the hole on the top of this too, where the little, little critters would come out. But unfortunately, it's kind of the same. So there, that's the hole. So that'll be the thinner part and the little snails kind of crawl out of there. So that is another, which means, yeah, spring is coming. I'll have a bunch of babies soon. Another angel wing, lovely. Yeah, that's a real nice one. And it's hard to find the bigger ones. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Another lovely angel wing, another lovely paper fig. So yeah, those will be the, the casualties from the storms, the angel wings and the paper figs. Angel wings, if you really, really want them, go to Fort Myers Beach after a storm. That's where I tend to find lots of those angel wings. And an alternate telon. Yeah, they're just kind of neat. I like that record pattern on it. There's a bunch of different little talons. I like the rose petal talons. Those also happen to be at Fort Myers Beach. But the alternate talon. Now I'm going to mosey on up the beach and I'm going to let you enjoy some beach time. Okay, I might need a little help with this one too. So I found myself a skull. And I, I, from the top it looks like an alligator, but I don't really, I really don't think that's an alligator. 
So I don't know, something with a flat head like that? The nostrils on top? Like, I just, I don't know, curious. If you have any idea, by all means, go ahead and drop a comment below. What is that mystery skull? A disc docenia. What else? So when we have these storms, you'll get the new, like, really nice shells. And some of the older ones will get kicked up. So you never know what is all going to be here. It'll be a mixture of old and new. Yeah, nothing all that exciting here. A little kitten paw. That's kind of neat. So, yeah. Just your typical pile. Ooh, something very orange. Calico scallop. Very orange calico scallop. Cool. There will go my orange shell collection. Yes, I actually have, I have a white shell collection and an orange shell collection. Oh, <gasps> speaking of orange. Oh, please be... Oh man, yeah, that is just a tiny piece of a horse conch. And sometimes I get lucky, the whole shell is attached to it, and sometimes just a piece, and that's okay. I kind of like that, look like at the mystery of the beach. Another mystery of the beach. Oh, look at the eyeballs, little blue eyeballs. So that is a calico scallop, a live calico scallop. Mm, I'm waiting to see if it's going to chatter, but yeah, there's its eyeballs. And if you could see it looking between the two shells. So what I'm trying to show you here is that it's different. It is not exactly the same pattern on the top and on the bottom or left, right, however you want to call it. The two shells are different. So I'll leave a little critter. So do one chatter, yep, and get swallowed by the surf. All right. What else? As I'm waiting for the tide to go out. All right, it's looking a little chunkier. All right, get ourselves a lightning whelk. Oh, look at this one. It's like the printer ran out of ink. I'll show you. There's a white spot there, like that area. A lovely printer ran out of ink, lightning whelk. All right, this is one of my favorites. This is a Florida fighting conch, and I have a weakness for these shells. I absolutely love, very common, so I really feel like I need to justify why I love them so much. So that's a horse conch. Ah, so that's a Florida horse conch. Can I hold it like so? And I'm, I'm evaluating it. Nah, forget it. I'm just going to concentrate on this Florida fighting conch. Oh, all right. So this is a moon snail. Another one of those shark eyes, a moon snail, which I'm like going gaga over. It's gorgeous. I know it's covered with that beach stuff. I'm going to clean that up too. Very end of the video. Let's see what happens, how I can clean up that shark eye. I think I can do it turkey wing or zigzag arc or you know what i also think that this guy might be called a zebra arc so one shell many names i like turkey wing now this lightning whelk so the critter is in there so that is a live lightning whelk it is happily doing its thing probably not so happy it's upside down i'm, I'm gonna flip it over in a second but that's alive a bunch of us shellers have seen it just kind of left it alone and that's what i'm going to do just kind of just turn it over on its side and keep moving all right so here in this very beat up apple murex we have a hermit crab and this hermit crab cracked me up it was waiting for me to come along so then it could start like preening itself yes okay and it's just gonna like clean up like this to do its morning routine it's gonna like I don't know, like stretch maybe, or I don't know, is it moisturizing? I really don't know, but it was hilarious. Like it was waiting for me and then put on a little show. I wonder what those little blue things are. See the little blue marks on its arms? You know, just referred to my shell book. I don't know what kind of little hermit crab it is, but cute little hermit crab and a little fixer upper of a shell. There you go, friend. Enjoy your morning. All right. What else are we going to find? Oh, a banded tulip. That's a pretty nice looking banded tulip. Yeah. Oh, it's starting to look a little chunkier here. Oh, this looks good. Oh, probably going for that. The Florida prickly cockle. Yep, I can't resist that interior color. It's so beautiful. So, not really much to talk about on the one side, but I really do like the reverse. 
And we've got ourselves an Apple Murex. Oh, that's in pretty good shape if I do say. Is it empty? There we go. That's the next thing. Can I keep it? Yeah, I can. That is the keeper of an Apple Murex. Now, this is looking pretty promising. And that's exactly why I cover as much beach as I can. I just figure the more beach I cover, the more opportunities to run into, like, some great shells. Of a couple, okay, we got zigzag, colorful moon snow, calico clam. All right, take a minute. I'm doing this because I don't want my feet to get wet, so let me just grab what I got in case that surf comes in. So we have a live calico clam. We're gonna leave that. Ah, so that's broken. So that's a colorful moon snail. Bummer. It would have been a really nice one. It's got good color, but I'm not gonna keep it. But woo, you are very zigzaggy and very beautiful. So. I will easily be consoled with this very zigzag Florida fighting conch. That is a really pretty show. Oh, and another hmm, apple murex. Yes, it is an apple murex. Am I going to keep it? That is the question. You know what? Some of those, I'll work it out when I get home. I'll bring it home. I can always bring it back to the beach another time. Juvenile fighting conch. Yep, I'm gonna go for the second one because I can't resist those zigzags. What about you? Do you have a, spe is there any other Florida Fighting Conch people out there? Hold your hand up and then let me know below. Do you have like a special Fighting Conch attribute? I do, I like the zigzags. I'm still looking for that albino. That, I'm holding right there. That is a common nutmeg. Oh dear, yeah, that's another Apple Murex. Now, I suspect I'm thinking, well, I know I'm already cleaning a couple shells. Do I clean that one too? So I'm not sure if I turn that into a project or not, but either way, I got a handful of lovely seashells. Now, if you were thinking zebra arc, zigzag arc, turkey wing, you were right. We picked up one of those already today. Yeah, I have, to, me personally, I have to look at the bottom to see if it's actually broken or not, because it's kind of a weird, very, not a very uniform shell. That is just only, that is only an orange calico scallop. Just a calico scallop, but really pretty. Oh, little horse conch. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, all right, yeah, I'm looking, making sure there's no hermit crab. And of course, yeah, the beach stuff. I'm not worried about that beach stuff. Oh, an even better horse conch. A little bigger. All right, it's slightly broken, but oh, the color, really pretty, Florida horse conch. And nutmeg, another one of those nutmegs. So it's kind of beaded. You know, the newer ones, the ones that are a little more in better condition will have beautiful little bumps all over it. Another banded tulip. And those are such handsome shells. I just like banded tulips. Likely because I grew up in New Jersey and we never got anything cool like that. So this is also a banded tulip. And this is the front of the shell. So that is the actual front. The critter would come out of that opening. And you'll notice, well, this is live. So there's a critter inside that shell. The critter itself is like black and white and maybe like a little red. And then I thought to myself, oh, the horse conch is also red and is a member of the tulip family. So this little bended tulip, I'm just gonna leave right here at the water's edge. Oh, cut ribbed arc. Yeah, I do. That's probably one of my, I like the turkey wing from an arc standpoint, but I really like the cut ribbed arc too. So here we have another banded tulip, a juvenile fighting conch. And I'm about to score this really awesome calico scallop. Gorgeous. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of beach ahead of us, but uh, my schedule does not allow me to stay here the entire day. So I'm going to need to turn around and at least think about heading back off the beach. But in the meantime, don't worry, I will slow down and pick up all of those shells that are calling my name saying, don't leave me here. Not to worry. Not to worry. If you're pretty and I spy you, it's likely you'll be coming home with me. And I know I get the question a lot, what do you do with your seashells? 
check me out on Etsy. I know I got to get more stuff up on there, but help me out. Help me, <laughs> help me with my seashell collection. So this is a buttercup leucine. There's a couple different buttercup uh, leucines rather, but the buttercup is the most predominant one that we find down here in Southwest Florida. Now I will say I totally overdressed. I could easily have gone in the water today, but I just really hate being cold. I, I don't know how else to say it. So I'm gonna be a little more careful the next time I go out and see if I can maybe get my feet wet. So that is a pear whelk. A really beautiful, gorgeous, nice strong color on it. And that lovely pear whelk. Now this is an apple murex and the animal is still in the shell. So there's a little brown thing called the operculum and that's a little trap door, protects it. And then the critter's in there. So I, that shell will not be coming home with me. That, it's not a, sh well, it is a shell, but it's really a snail and it's shell. The snail and the shell are gonna stay here at the beach. I'm gonna see if there's anything else that's empty, not occupied. Oh, oh. Ah, that hurts. I, I love moon snails. That shark eye moon snail, just a piece. Oh man, that's okay. I guess if it was that easy to find giant seashells all over the place, it would really kind of take the thrill out of it, right? So that is another apple murex. Frankly, that looks in questionable shape, but again, I'll just work that out when I go home. Okay, you are empty. Wow. That's unusual for, yeah, I'm really making sure for a lightning whelk that big to be just empty and, yeah, cool. So it does have a little bit of discoloration on it, but the size is fabulous. I'm liking the color. I'm not worried about the beach stuff. Yeah, nice looking lightning whelk. Woohoo. Oh, you are just lovely calico scallop. So that's another little scallop. Now the scallop, we only get a couple of different scallops here in Southwest Florida. The calico scallop, the rough scallop, this is another calico scallop, the bay scallop. So not, I don't know, three or four different kinds. I think the West Coast might have actually more bivalves, but that is another lovely looking calico scallop. Now there's just one tiny piece of housekeeping. If you do decide to come here, be patient. It took me about an hour and 20 minutes to get here. It should have taken me about 25. So just be patient. Once you get here, it's awesome. You can completely leave that all behind you. But we are still recovering from a hurricane. So just be patient. Now it's not often that I find smooth duck clams and I have never found a live one. They are weird looking. Now I know it's alive, so that is a smooth duck clam. Well, clams in general, just kind of weird looking. Neato. So I'm gonna get this little critter a little closer. Yeah, I'm gonna dig a little hole with my heel. So I'm just kind of tossing it into the waves. There you go. There you go, smooth duck clam. So, yep, that beach was pretty fun. Those sharks were awesome. That was just a great day here. Now, one last thing, other than that turkey vulture, I'm actually trying to show you this tree. This is one of my favorite trees. I know it should be palm tree, but once I learned about the gumbo limbo tree, so I like the gumbo limbo tree because it's also called the tourist tree. Its skin will turn red and peel like a tourist. So the gumbo limbo tree, that's another, you can see that over at Gulfside City Park. So if you happen to park over there, look for your gumbo limbo tree. So in addition to those seashells, I did pick up a tiny bit of garbage. It was only 2.45 ounces. However, when it is combined with all the garbage that I take off the beach every time I go, it does total a little over 42 pounds of garbage. Now for the fun stuff I removed. We do have a couple of those cut ribbed arc. We got that, uh, the uh, moon snails, including that one with all the stuff on it. We'll come back to that. The Florida prickly cockle, all of those paper figs. I did get this broken whelk. Just gonna put that on there. A dystocenia, the banded tulips, which are always super fun. A couple of those horse conks, a couple lightning whelks. I mean, some of those really nice looking ones, some angel wings, a couple of those little kitten paws. On the bottom right, there is a couple of base scallops and calico scallops. 
Above that, we have the Florida fighting conchs, a bunch of those juveniles and adults. And then on top of that, yellow prickly copples, buttercup leucines, giant Atlanta cockles. We have some apple murex, the calico clam. And then we are gonna take a look again at that shark eye as well as that true tulip. But first the shark eye, because frankly, it's just a lot easier. So that just gets soaked in bleach and ta-da so literally it was only just soaked in bleach and i did a little bit of scraping now that's when it's wet you can almost see zero imperfections and then dry what a handsome looking shell all right so the true tulip first i soaked it in bleach i didn't have to but i just kind of wanted to see does it do much you know what it does a little bit it does you know kind of soften up some of that stuff now the next shot is going to be after i dipped it in acid pay attention to the lines yeah, so overall, I didn't really see a difference, but you definitely can see the lines in the true tulip a little bit better. So just, I was just kind of curious what would happen. And so now I know. And frankly, any of the time I find any new tips or tricks and whether, you know, anything that has to do with the beach, you know I'm going to give it to you guys. And Patreons, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for considering even, you know, coming along with me and supporting me. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. And everybody else, thank you, thank you, thank you. Next week, we are headed to Fort Myers Beach. It's a cool walk. I find something exciting, and that's not even the most exciting thing. So it just it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again next Sunday.